Today, we want to look at linear quadratic Gaussian control, also known as LQG control. Now, where we are, or where we've been, the first couple of weeks of the semester, we looked at pole placement. With pole placement, given a dynamic system, I can find the feedback gains to place the poles anywhere I want. The problem with pole placement is I don't really know where the poles belong. In the domino pole, it kind of makes sense. That tells you how the system's going to behave. But where do you put all the rest of the poles? or what gains are best. The strength of pole placement is you can do anything. Its weakness is you can do anything. You don't really know where the poles belong. Linear quadratic Gaussian control, or LQG control, is another way to find the feedback gain kx. Here what you do is you define a cost function, such as I want to penalize x squared and u squared, meaning drive the states to zero, but don't use too much input. Once I define the cost function, Find the feedback gains that minimize that cost function. In essence, what you're doing is you're trying to find the optimal feedback gains, meaning the optimal pull locations of the closed-loop system. Uh, personally, I don't like the word optimal. I just think of LQG as just another way to find Kx. With pull placement, I'll use the routine that we wrote, PPL. Given your dynamics, A, B, and your desired pull locations, find Kx. LQG is almost the same. It's given A, B, and my cost function, the weightings on x and the weightings on u, now find the optimal feedback gains. This is a built-in function in MATLAB called LQR. It solves the algebraic Riccati equation that we talked about yesterday. From our standpoint, we don't really care. It's find kx. How you find it, I don't really care. I just want to find kx. The solution is given a dynamic system, your x dot equals ax plus bu, y equals cx. What LQG does is it minimizes the cost function x transpose qx plus u transpose ru, where q and r are constant matrices that have to be positive and definite. The result is the resulting optimal feedback gain is minus kx times x, where kx is r, trans, or r inverse b transpose p, and p is the solution to the algebraic Riccati equation. Again, from our standpoint, we don't necessarily care. We just know that kx is a stabilizing feedback gain that minimizes some cost function. Essentially, what you're doing is you're playing with some gains. I've got q and r. q is essentially the weighting on each state. r is the weighting on the input. Uh, the nice thing about LQR methods is this cost function has a solution. Having a solution is a big plus. Also, the feedback gains that you get are constants. That's another big plus. The cost function is actually fairly arbitrary, though. Uh, the reason we use it is because it does have a solution. If you want to change the cost function, that's fine. However, if you change the cost function from being quadratic, the solution is much, much harder to find. The solution you wind up with is called optimal control. Um, but I don't like the word optimal because it's optimal for an arbitrary cost function. In addition, there's a proof that any stabilizing feedback control law is optimal for some Q and R, which kind of defeats the words of optimal if every stabilizing feedback gain is optimal. Uh, personally, I just think of LQR as a tool. It's like pole placement. It's another way to find Kx. And that's what we'll be doing for the next couple weeks. Do exactly what we did before. Uh, find feedback gains to stabilize the system, add server compensators, add an observer. Except that now, rather than using pole placement techniques, we'll be using LQR just to see how this tool works. A couple examples. Let's take the fourth order heat equation that we covered a little bit earlier and find the optimal feedback gains for three different cost functions. If my cost function is just the output y squared plus u squared, this says drive the output to zero, but don't use too much input. The second case is I really care about the output y, weight it by 10 to the fourth, and I care a little bit about the input. The third case is drive y to zero, but the fuel is really expensive. Uh, penalize the use of fuel or input very heavily. To do that, you first input the system in MATLAB. Here's your A and B. To find the output C, my output Y, or my J is weighting Y, which is C transpose X, or C times X. So Q is just C transpose C. That's meaning the output with the weighting is Y squared. And R is 1. 
If I solve the algebraic required equation, which in MATLAB is just the function LQR, say kx is LQR of a, b, q, and r, it gives me the feedback gains. What that means is the optimal feedback gains given my cost function place the poles right here. This is the optimal pole location. If I change the weighting on Q, the optimal pole location changes. If I don't really care about X, that says make the feedback gains very, very small. If I do care about X very heavily, that means make the gains fairly large. The resulting pole locations are shifting. If the weighting on X is very, very small, I wind up with pretty much the open loop system. As I increase the gains, the poles shift. And you can plot the location of the poles shifting. Here, the weighting on Q is 10 to the minus fourth. As the weighting on Q increases, I move along this root locus plot and I wind up at 45 degrees. Um, that's very, fairly typical with optimal control. If you weight the output very heavily, you tend to wind up with poles at 45 degrees angle for the dominant pole. In addition, I've got two other poles that are following this root locus. Again, I don't really care too much about that. They're not dominant. But given my cost function, there is an optimal place to put them, and LQR will find that. Um, to plot the step response, I'm just using the following functions. I'm going to give A, B, Q, and R, where Q is varying. Make the DC gain 1, and then plot uh, combined upon the closed loop system and take the step response of the closed loop system. What that looks like is this. I've got my step responses when Q is very, very small. That's my open loop response. As Q increases, I get a faster system, faster and faster. Then I start getting some overshoot. That's from having the poles at 45 degrees. Now, if I want to tune the step response, the trick is really just using Q and R as knobs. I can adjust Q, adjust R to get the response that I want. This is really just using LQR as a tool. I've got some desired response. How do I adjust these knobs to get what I want? And typically I've got two knobs to play with. I've got the weighting on Y. That's Y equals CX. Uh, that'll make the system faster. If I increase the weighting on Y prime, uh, y prime is C times A times X, so Q is CA transpose times CA. I can sit there and have these two knobs to play with, alpha and beta. Alpha increases the weighting on Y, speeds up the system. Beta looks like friction. If I add more friction, that gets rid of the overshoot. So what I can do is find the feedback gain to force my system to behave in some desired fashion. In this case, we want to have 2% settling time of 4 seconds. The dominant pole is at minus 1. And no overshoot, just put the dominant pole at minus 1 plus j0. This is my desired response. I'll now play with my two weightings, alpha and beta. Increase alpha until I'm fast enough. I start getting overshoot. To get rid of the overshoot, add friction. Increase beta. And by playing around with those two parameters, I can now adjust to get my desired response. After a little bit of iteration, what I wound up with is the weighting on y is 10 to the fourth. The weighting on y prime is also 10 to the fourth. That gives me the blue response. That's pretty close to what I want. So that's one way to design a feedback control system with using LQR methods. Instead of having four feedback gains or four, yeah, four feedback gains, four pole loca locations to play with, I now just have two. Two parameters are much easier to adjust than four. By adjusting the weighting on Y, I can speed up the system. By adjusting the weighting on Y prime, I can reduce the overshoot, slow it down a little bit. Play with these two until the response looks good. Once you get a good response, that's my, that's the cue I want to use, and that'll tell me my feedback gains. That'll also tell me the, you know, quote, quote, ideal closed loop pole locations to meet my desired response. That's the idea behind LQR control. Basically, it's another way to find feedback gains where you just have two knobs to play with, waiting on Y, waiting on Y prime. With that, you should be able to do the homework for this week, find the feedback gains for the different systems we're looking at, only now using LQR techniques rather than pole placement.